So today we're going to try out a little technique called scraffito, which means to scratch through. Uh, I'm working on a piece of old card. You can use canvas or canvas board or the back of something. Um, since this is just a little test, I figured mat board is about the right stiffness. We don't particularly need it to have a lot of tooth, but you could choose something with a bit more tooth to it if you want to. Um, if you have to use paper, try to use a stiff piece because it will. you don't want it to be uh, flex, flexing when we do the scratching. You can use any two colours for this, so long as they're sufficiently different enough that they'll show one against the other. So I'm going to use the darker indigo blue to make the base colour and this turquoise uh, as the next layer that will be scratched through to reveal the darker one. Um, it doesn't really matter what consistency you use. These are both the ordinary medium consistency acrylics. I'm not, uh, I'll probably be using more of the heavy body when we come to do our painting. Um, it doesn't really matter, so long as it's not very thin, because you'll need to be able to scratch through to a surface that's properly sealed without it scratching right through to the, the paper or the canvas. For today's purpose, you can just squeeze your paint straight out onto the surface. So I'm going to do three different tests of, um, oops, three different little areas to try different patterns. So you can use either a brush, a flat brush to spread the paint for the first layer or even a palette knife. Just bear in mind, if you use a palette knife, you're likely to leave a thicker layer of paint and that's fine because we do want it to seal well as a plastic sealed surface. So we don't want to thin down the paint too much. Um, but just remember that if you leave it very thick, it's going to take longer to dry. So I think that will be sufficient for our three little areas. I'm, I'm very much moving towards using a palette knife whenever I can, because um, whereas normally if I'd used a brush right now, I would have to wash it in water and every bit of paint that goes into that painting water and then gets flushed or down the drain is uh, plastic that's going into our environment. So um, I'm going to just wipe this on a tissue and then the tissue will go in the bin and it's no, not going into the water supply. Um, it's still not good to have a lot of waste on your, in your acrylics and to be honest I'm sure there's less to be wiped off because I've used more of it straight down on the paper than if I had used a brush, because the brush obviously holds lots of paint within its bristles. Okay, so my little bit of uh, <laughs> Enviro tip for the day. Let this dry thoroughly. This is really, really dry now, so we're ready to add another layer. So you want to have your tools in mind as to what you're going to scratch into this uh, second layer so that you can get going with it without having to hunt for something. Uh, any kind of thing can do, even a broken pencil, something like a bit of plastic tool that you uh, want to re-implement, um, a coffee stick that's broken in half, anything where you can scratch in, or literally the back end of a brush that's quite narrow so you can get some details. Uh, what you don't want to use is a, a paintbrush. Once you put the paint on, then we're not going to use a paintbrush to make the marks. I'm going to try spreading this with, and we'll do three sections, so you'll do one at a time, so you have time to think about each one without worrying about the next one drying up before you get there. So let's put a little bit on at a time. Now remember, we want a nice thickish layer so that you get um, a full coverage. There we go. Now, if you want to, you can look at the reference picture from now. So, as you start to work into the surface, you can see already that um, it's quite easy to push the paint away. You might find that if it's running back in quite a lot right now, and if you want to keep a piece of tissue handy so that you can clean off your nib. 
um, as it starts to dry up, and you may want to work on edge pieces earlier, you'll find that um, where you move the paint, it won't run back again so easily in the parts where it's starting to dry. You don't want to leave it too long for them to dry because then what will happen is like there at the edge, it's starting to not really move and so you're, you're not getting such a... such an impact. So this is my finger coral. There might be somewhere you want to put on the sides showing little turrets thing, things. It's more about getting a pattern going that's a stylized version of what you want to um, give the impression of. You can do, of course, here, this is a good example. You can see where we're scratching through to the dark paint here. Over here is over the edge of the dark paint, so you're scratching through to just the cream, and it looks completely different. Now I'm going back into a couple of these that were early, and of course the paint was very, very wet, and so it sort of ran back in place. And that looks better. So, um, yes, if you want to do sort of more gestural marks to get more of you into the expression of what's going on, that's absolutely fine too. Have a little play and see what works. You could even do some cross hatching or something. You want darker sides to your um, little turrets there. I don't know about that. So it's up to you if you move on to the next one or let that one dry before you move on. Obviously, you don't want to be leaning on your own work if it's very wet. Um, let's keep going. So the next little patch. Just spread out my paint again. Of course, uh, when you're doing this in your painting, they won't be in nicely lined up little rectangles. That's just for the practice session. In fact, um, let's get some more of that paint. You can try different twigs or tools. I think this one, I'll try this one. Um, so this is going to be my uh, brain coral patterns. You might want to actually follow the, along to see what they're supposed to look like. I'm just kind of making it up here. But you can see what the... Uh... Yeah, how the method is working with the scrovito is revealing the underneath colour quite well. Uh, the actual brain coral that is in the picture is quite a complicated one with a reticulated pattern um, so I may not be able to get it exactly as per the reference picture it's kind of like double layered edges to it but you get the idea So now our final section where we're going to practice the soft corals looking like trees. So this actually would be a similar colour to the water that we'll be putting on top. Spreading out the paint. Nice continuous surface there.
so um, we're looking for we might actually want two different thicknesses because we've got the, the thick sort of branching basis of the soft coral kind of like a tree looking for the thicker portions of the branching network that comes out of the reef this of course has gone off the uh, dark paint which is good for reference comparison okay now we're going to put in the um the part that looks like twigs You might be picking up too much paints. Uh, just make sure you're not overloading it and clogging it up. Um, Beauty of this is you can crisscross the lines and overlap them and without worrying about what it really looks like. There's some more sort of um, semi important branches. <laughs> you can see some lovely texture here where I've lifted off the palette knife. So uh, I'm also thinking about the, the way the flow of the water might move the um, soft coral branches as well. So. Of course they do branch again as they come off. Um, they come off like this and then branch another time. So you can notice all of those little details when you're observing the reference picture and just Make mental notes of how to do that in future. So make it, if you want it to look very realistic. And here we are now, the paint is almost dried. <clears throat> and you can see quite clearly the dark lines that have been scratched through to reveal the underneath layer of paint, the indigo paint. And um, will be even clearer when it's completely dry. The other thing to notice is that you get ridges as you form these little marks. So you get a hill and gully kind of arrangement. And if you then want to skate some another layer of paint over the top, it will catch on those ridges, which can be quite useful. But not to complicate things in this 10 minute tip, uh, I'd like to say thank you for watching this demonstration of Scrafito.